Apple have just released a brand new iPhone 13 and pretty much all the new features are in the camera lens and the video side of things. So today we're going to discuss the question that's on everybody's lips. Is the iPhone 13 good enough to produce high quality sports videos? Hey guys, I'm Ich, I'm a professional sports videographer. And as I just said, today we're talking about the brand new iPhone 13. Um, I actually got some notes with me this time because there's a lot of features that I wanna go through in this video, but I wanna do this um, quite quick, uh, especially that there's already a bunch of videos on the topic. So I'm gonna stick to the sports videography related features. I'm not gonna talk about the screen and, and things like that. So I'm just going to talk about all the features that I think are relevant to us. And uh, then at the end, I'll let you know if I think that the iPhone 13 uh, is good enough for sports videography. So first of all, the iPhone 13 come in four different models. The iPhone 13 mini, the iPhone 13, the iPhone 13 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Straight off the bat, I can tell you that the iPhone 13 mini and the iPhone 13, in my opinion, are no goes. And the reason for that is the zoom range, because basically on these cameras, you got an ultra wide angle lens that has a 13 millimeter focal length, which by the way, not everybody realizes that, but the autofocus on that lens only works on pro models. So if you have the 13 or the 13 mini, it's just a fix, um, a fixed focus, so you can easily be out of focus when using it. The wide angle lens is a 26 millimeter focal length. And these are the only two lenses that are on the 13 and the 13 mini. So if you're filming from a very wide angle and you're happy to stay with that the entire time, let's say you're doing like a live stream of a basketball game and you're just putting your phone on a on a tripod somewhere with a full view of the court and just let it be for the entire game, then yes, you could potentially use the, the mini or the 13. But if you intend to capture any kind of action, trying to get some close ups, some tight shots of whatever, these phones are not gonna cut it. So you definitely gonna have to go with a Pro or Pro Max model which by the way, have an improved version of these ultra wide and wide angle lenses, which makes them much more efficient in low light conditions. Not only that, but the pro models also have an extra telephoto lens with a 77 millimeter focal length, which is the equivalent of a 3X optical zoom. And 77 millimeter is not that much, obviously. So, but I'm gonna get Later on, I'm gonna explain why it sort of, um, it still works, maybe not for everything, but for some things. So we'll get there. But yeah, I just wanna say that, you know, 77 millimeters is basically the bare minimum. Like if we don't have that, then there's no point. So that's why you wanna to stick to the pro models. And also I wanted to point out that there is a 9X digital zoom as well on all these cameras, but, um, you guys already know my opinion on digital zooms. And if you don't, um, just check out the video that I made about it, which will probably appear in the top left corner of your screen. Otherwise, let's move on to cinematic mode, which was their big sort of new feature. Uh, very exciting stuff. You can, you know, rack focus and, and all this stuff. Looks amazing in the Apple video, obviously. But, well, first of all, people have to realize that it's not real depth of field, like it's it's been added on in post. So it's a bit like the, the portrait mode when you're taking photos with your iPhone, there's a fake blur that's been added in the background. So the pros with that are the possibilities of doing all these cinematic sort of moves and especially since you can actually play with it in post. So you can film and not really care too much about where the focus is and then go and post in your clip and sort of decide what you want in focus and what you don't. So that sounds like it could be like, creatively speaking, could be really cool to play with. But when you look at how that fake blur works in portrait mode, just on photos, like not maybe not all your photos, but some of your photos, like the edges of your subject will be a bit weird. Some parts will be blurry, especially the hair, or if you're holding something in your hand, it'll be blurry when it shouldn't be. And then, so 
I can only imagine that these issues will just be amplified in video, especially with sports, because there's going to be so much movement. Things are going to be running all over the place. They're going to be different subjects. So I struggle to believe that the blur is going to be able to follow someone running from left to right and from, you know, towards the camera or away from the camera. Because if you if you notice, like in the Apple presentation, you know, nothing's moving. It's just like a, a nice rack focus, pretty basic. And there's not a lot of movement in the image. And I can only imagine if there's like five, six, seven people running around in the screen. Personally, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a mess. But the other problem anyway is that the cinematic mode is only available in 1080p at 30 frames per second. So ultimately, you're going to have to choose between high resolution in 4K or cinematic mode in 1080p with no slow motion whatsoever. I mean, personally, I would highly recommend to go with 4K at 60 frames per second. So I'm, and I'm assuming that that's what everybody's gonna choose. So cinematic mode sounds cool in theory, but I don't think anyone's gonna be using it when it comes to sports videography. Another thing that videographers are very excited about is that you will now be able to record in ProRes. If you don't know what that is, ProRes is a file format. It's a very high quality file format. It's made by Apple and um, yeah, it's, it's great. But first of all, it's not on the phone just yet. They actually said that it's coming later this year, like through an, an, up, uh, an update at some point, which personally, when I buy something, I want to pay for something that's already there. Like I, I, I'm never comfortable spending money on the promise of something coming later on. Like that's definitely not my style. But the other thing is that even if it was there right now, um, ProRes files are super big. We're talking roughly six times the size of an H.264 file, which is usually what you get in your mirrorless cameras. Obviously, this is not an exact science because it depends on the frame rate, the codec, like. Um, you know, bit right, all these things, but um, but yeah, it's huge files. So if you intend to just film five minutes here or there, great. But if you intend to film an entire football game, for example, I don't think it's gonna fit in your phone unless you get the most expensive one. That's like a, a terabyte, I think, is the maximum capacity. Um, otherwise, you're gonna end up having to dump footage at uh, halftime or even potentially every quarter, depending how much you film. So. Not ideal if you want to capture B-roll and, you know, different cutaways and stuff when there's no action. Um, yeah. And then that means also you got to carry your laptop around and all these things. So, yeah. Anyway, ProRes is great, but it, it comes at a price. Another thing I want to discuss before I get to talk about what the iPhone 13 is actually good for is how convenient it actually is to be filming with a phone. Because that's the whole point, isn't it? Like we... we we're all excited about this because we have the dream of just whipping out our phone out of our pockets and being able to film this high quality footage that will be just as good as any high quality mirrorless camera, let's say. So, and I think that iPhones are definitely going in that direction, other phones as well, by the way. Um, but my point is that yes, the quality is there or will be there soon, but is it really that convenient though? Because I think it is convenient if you're just, oh, something's happening now and I just want to capture it real quick and I'm filming for two minutes, for five minutes, whatever. But if you're actually going to film an entire game, you know, first of all, you're going to need a, um, to add a microphone on there. You're going to need to properly put it on some sort of gimbal, not necessarily to stabilize it because the stabilization in it is already pretty good, but more so for, for you know, to be able to hold it in a way that's not a pain in the ass. Like you're not gonna be filming like this for two hours. So you're gonna have some sort of rig to make it convenient. And if you have to rig your phone with a gimbal, with a mic, with something else, then isn't this defeating the purpose? Like isn't the whole point not to have to do what you're already doing with your mirrorless camera? So my point is that I'm not convinced that filming it with a phone is that convenient. But in saying that, I'm an old man. 
<laughs> I've been filming with cameras my entire life, so of course going from that to a phone is highly inconvenient for me. I'm, it's not my style, it's not my generation, it's, it's not me. But if you're a kid who, you know, got into videography with their phone because that's all they had at the time, and for you it's just second nature, you're super good at it, and you can do all these creative tricks, for, for, for that generation of videographer, the, the iPhone 13 can be a very powerful tool. But I do believe that it is a powerful tool for people in that very specific situation. People who don't have a mirrorless camera, and maybe they have the money, but it just makes more sense for them to invest that money into a phone that can also film than into a camera. And I also suspect that a lot of kids they might get help from their parents to buy a new phone. They probably won't get the same financial help to buy a camera. So that way, for them, it makes more sense as well. And, and if that's the case for you, then I think that the iPhone 13 is extremely good, but it has, obviously, its limitation. And this is the part of the video where I tell you what it's good for. I think the iPhone 13 can be extremely good for indoor sports. I think outdoors, you're going to be limited by the zoom range. And, and yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Like, I think 77 millimeters, definitely not enough for, um, for outdoor sports like football, soccer, cricket, things like that. Um, my trick that I was going to suggest for indoors would be to do what most of you probably already do, which is to film in 4K, but edit in 1080p, which basically doubles your, your focal length. So you're going from a 77 millimeter maximum to now um, 154, is that right? Yeah, 154 millimeter maximum, which is, in my opinion, Still not good enough for outdoors, but more than good enough for indoors. So if you're filming a basketball game, for example, you now have a camera that can go from 12 millimeters to 154 millimeters. Not too sure how that transition goes. I think there's when you're switching from one lens to the other, there's, you know, I don't think it's going to be that smooth, but you have the possibility to film at all these different focal length in 4K, high res, uh, high quality, pro res even. So great place to start. Much better than where I started many years ago. But, and I cannot stress this enough, I will never choose a phone, well not yet anyway, over a mirrorless camera. If you take the Sony a6400 for example, which is the camera that I recommend to beginners, I would still buy that camera before buying an iPhone 13 if I'm doing sports videography. There's just way more features. Even if you're sticking to 1080p, you're just gonna get a lot more out of a mirrorless camera than you will out of a phone because first of all, not all 4K is great 4K. So I'm gonna wait and see what it actually looks like, especially I wanna see what that ProRes looks like. And uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see at the end of the day, but my suggestion is if you're already filming with mirrorless camera, it's a bit like what I was saying in my previous video where if you're editing with two or three screens, it's very difficult to then go back to just editing on one screen or editing on your iPod, iPad or something like that. It's sort of the same thing here. If you're working with mirrorless cameras, going to a phone is not gonna be enjoyable whatsoever for you. Anyway, I think for a guy who doesn't even have an iPhone 13 yet, it's more than enough for one video. So thank you again for watching. If you want to know more about the uh, Sony a6400 uh, that I recommend for beginners, just click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now. Thank you again for watching. My name is E, and I hope I earned the privilege of your time.